This video is brought to you today by Ghost Tags. This is my own company that I started because I wanted a glow in the dark air tag case. These things are awesome. You can stick them on your backpack, on your dog's collar, and you will be able to find it at night. We've got two colors, blue and green. They've got great reviews. Go check them out. Links to them down below. Now on to the video. Hey guys, what's up? I'm Slim and you're watching Slimothy TV. In this video, I'm going to quickly go over iOS 18. Uh, Apple finally put up their iOS 18 preview page, so we're going to go through this real quick while we're waiting for the iOS 18 developer beta to drop. It should be out here shortly, probably by the time I get this video up. Anyways, here is the quick iOS 18 preview. That's the new little icon for it, so you'll be seeing that all over YouTube. And as usual, it's coming this fall for everyone else. Uh, if you're not a developer, I definitely do not recommend you install this developer beta unless you have another phone. All right, so I'm going to run through this as quickly as possible. So Apple intelligence was one of their main buzzwords that they used at this event. It's going to use all of the context from you on your phone to give you helpful and hopefully relevant information. So you can see here, new writing tools and language capabilities help you write, summarize longer text and prioritize notifications. There's actually a whole new focus mode to allow you to reduce distractions. So it will only show you notifications that it thinks are important. So I'm gonna definitely be trying that out. You can also generate your own images and emoji right within conversations using this AI, which is gonna be super fun. And yeah, this is going to basically take over Siri and hopefully make Siri good because Siri hasn't been good for a long time. You can now rearrange your app icons basically any way you want now with blank icons. Uh, this, I mean, they're obviously not blank, but you can actually move stuff around now properly. You can also tint your icons uh, and there is dark mode as well. You can kind of get an idea of what that might look like right here. And here's the uh, color picker if you want to change up your icons to fit a certain theme. I personally don't think they look that good. And as you can see, these are only the stock apps. So I doubt that this will work with third party apps, but we'll have to see about that. You can also lock and hide apps from the home screen if you need to do that. Control Center looks completely different. You can actually scroll and swipe between different pages within Control Center to get to exactly what you need. There's a lot more in there too, so you can like dive right into your home controls just like this, which is going to be very nice. And you can see right here the Controls Gallery where you can place new icons in there that you use the most. You can also rearrange and resize these controls uh, by just dragging, as you can see here in this animation. And finally, you can change those little icons on your lock screen to be something else other than the camera and the flashlight. So you can make them whatever you want. I think they use Snapchat as an example. Not many people still use that, I don't think, but uh, yeah, if you do, there you go. Now the Photos app got a complete overhaul. It's only one page now. Uh, so it's gonna just show all your pictures and then you can scroll down to get some AI generated stuff where it kind of combines what it thinks is going to be most helpful for you. So as you can see, this one is called Recent Days, Trips and People and Pets. So it automatically puts all those together for you of the people you talk to most, your pets, and what you've done recently. And there's a new carousel, which highlights your best content in a beautiful poster-like view, it says. And it displays a new set of photos each day for a fun surprise. So hopefully you're not seeing the same images over and over. All right, iMessage got a big update here with iOS 18. You guys can see these animations. I'll replay it again. Uh, you can put them on different messages and I think they look pretty cool. You can also now use any emoji to send a tap back reply. So that's pretty cool. You can go through those. I think you can also do generative AI within here. So I don't know why it doesn't say anything about that here yet, but I believe that's coming. Now this is kind of cool. It says messages via satellite stay connected when you're without Wi-Fi or cellular. Yeah, there's a little one next to this. This might cost money. Let me click on that real quick. Let's just see. Okay, it doesn't say it's going to cost money. So that's interesting. We'll have to find out about that. Schedule a message with send later. So that's something that a lot of people have had on other messaging apps. It's now coming to iMessage. Support for RCS messaging. We already knew that that was coming, but uh, there you go for people that talk to people with green bubbles. Now in the mail app, it will automatically sort your different uh, categories for email. So if you like that, you can use that. Me personally, I like to do that myself, but if you have a very cluttered inbox, you might need that. And then it's going to try to prioritize friends, family, colleagues. You know, if you're going on a plane trip somewhere, it's going to prioritize those emails and it has messages grouped for scanning. So you can view snippets of messages like receipts, marketing emails, and newsletters grouped by the sender. So that's going to actually help quite a bit uh, when you're digging through your email, looking for, you know, maybe a confirmation code or something from an airline. All right. Now for Safari, they're introducing highlights and it's going to automatically detect relevant information on a page 
and highlight it as you browse. They give the example of directions, quick links to learn more about people, music, movies, and TV shows. And now the reader mode gives you a table of contents with high level summary to get the gist of an article before reading on. So that is pretty nice to see. I mean, with AI, that's very easy for it to do. And it just makes sense that they would integrate that. Now there's a new passwords app. So this is gonna rival, you know, Bitwarden and 1Password and all of those uh, like that. So we'll have to see how this fleshes out and how well it works, but it says that it's going to basically put everything in one place, like your verification codes, security alerts, and your passwords, all of that in one spot. And it says it's going to work across all of your different devices, including Windows. So. We'll see how that works. It'll definitely be interesting to see. Next up is maps. There are topographic maps and trail networks that are now in the maps app, which is great. And you can download them so that you can have them before you go on your trip so that you're not accidentally in the middle of the woods with no service and you're not sure where to go. You can see this is going to be great for people that go on hikes. This actually is going to eliminate the need for a bunch of different third-party apps. I can already see it happening. So this is really good to see. I'm super happy that Apple is making uh, big improvements with the Maps app. In fact, just the other day, just a little story, uh, I was going somewhere. I've been testing out Waze, Apple Maps, uh, and Google Maps all at once and another third party app uh, all at once and Google Maps actually took me tried to take me the wrong way to the place and I was very shocked by this because I've always regarded Google Maps as the best but Apple Maps was the one that showed me the correct way and I already knew the way obviously so I didn't make the wrong turn Google Maps was about to lead me astray which is not good so Apple Maps has actually come a long way at least in the US so highly recommend trying it if you haven't yet anyways Looks like you can create your own routes as well. That's gonna be cool. Game mode, maximize gameplay performance so you can actually have a mode dedicated for this when you're playing a game and you want the best performance. It also says it's going to dramatically reduce the audio latency with AirPods and makes wireless game controllers incredibly responsive. So we'll have to see how that works. That sounds interesting. I don't really use AirPods just because of so much EMF radiation that comes off of them, but, but we'll have to see how that plays out. Now, next wallet, you can actually tap to cash, they call it. So if you're at the bar and someone buys you a drink and you wanna pay them back or something, you can now privately pay that person by just bringing your iPhone up to theirs. Now, obviously you both have to be on the same iOS version, I'm sure. That is pretty cool. You don't have to give them your phone number, their, your email address. You just wanna, hey, pay them and get it over with. That is going to be a neat feature. I might actually start using Apple Pay in that way. This actually makes a lot of sense and I'm glad Apple's done it. Next up, pay using rewards or pay in installments. Rewards and installments in Apple Pay. So that's a pretty big feature and also event tickets and event guides. So now when you have a ticket, this guide will pop up and show you maybe the map of a stadium or the temperature or good places to find merch or food. Very nice that that is going to be integrated. It just makes sense. Next up, AirPods. Hands-free Siri interaction. This looks so funny in the video, like someone's talking to them in their AirPods and they're just nodding their head, yes and no. I don't know. It just looked kind of funny, but I guess it could be useful. Not entirely sure. Maybe in day-to-day, -day, you know, that's just a feature that you would get used to. I don't know. Voice isolation on AirPods. So that's finally coming to those. Uh, don't know what took so long, but there you go. Personalized spatial audio for gaming. Notes. Now, Notes is going to be getting some huge updates. Live audio transcriptions, which is going to be perfect for college students or people in high school that like to record their notes. But on top of that, you can now crunch numbers right in your notes. So you can literally see stuff being uh, solved as you type it. And you can change it on the fly and it will update. This is epic. I am very excited for this. It's just like that Solver app. I don't know if you've ever used it, but it seems like Apple took some inspiration there and... Uh, yeah, this is gonna be a really cool feature. I'm super looking forward to that. Collapsible sections, you can simplify and hide text with collapsible section headers, making it easy to manage your most text heavy notes. That's gonna be nice so that you're not just scrolling through a bunch. You can highlight different words. The journal app has some updates, but I don't care about that. So I'm gonna skip it and I'm gonna keep going here. Apple TV app, new way to watch original content. Now, when you're watching, you can actually use insight here to get information on who's actually on screen at that moment. So if you're like, oh, who's that actor? You can pause it or not. Uh, just pull up Insight and you can see who it is at that very moment, which is really cool. You can also get information on the songs playing too. Home app, you can grant specific controls with guest access. So you can give them access to like a garage opener, alarm system, door locks at the times you choose. And you can also now magically unlock doors as you approach simply by carrying iPhone in a bag or pocket or by wearing an Apple watch. That's pretty cool. Robot vacuum cleaner support, that is uh, interesting. They didn't mention that at the keynote, but I guess it makes sense. View your home electricity use, but it looks like it's only for certain people, so that's that. Privacy and security. So this was something that they talked about at the very beginning. Uh, you can control how you share contacts with apps. Instead of giving apps all of your contacts, you can now select and pick and choose which contacts they have access to. It's actually a really cool feature. 
redesigned privacy and security settings. So it looks like they've made some updates there. By the way, I am going to be getting iOS 18 as soon as it drops. Looks like it is still not out as of 3.11, but as soon as it is out, I will be hopping on that beta train and showing you, hopefully tonight, a bunch of these features. So make sure you subscribe. Improved Bluetooth privacy, pair accessories with greater privacy. They kind of glossed over that one, but there's a whole lot more, as you guys can see, accessibility. They already talked about a lot of that before the keynote. Calculator on the iPad now, which is pretty cool. And Math Notes, which is also in the Notes app. They redid a little bit of the calendar. Share Play, you can now actually remote control someone else's device if you need to, like to give some tech support or something. Emergency SOS Live Video, I don't think that they talked about that, but that's pretty interesting. Uh, that could that could be very helpful. You can now record and transcribe a live call directly from the phone app. Of course, it's going to alert everyone on the phone that you are recording, so keep that in mind. Here are the devices that iOS 18 is coming to. So from the 15 series all the way down to the SE second gen and iPhone 10R. So if you have one of those devices, congratulations, you can try out iOS 18. I don't think all of the AI features will be on the older phones, but we'll have to see. Anyways, that's all I got for the first iOS 18 preview. I'm going to be having this hands-on here in the studio in just a bit once it drops. And you guys, make sure to keep it locked to the channel if you want to see more of that. Anyways, if you liked the video, hit the big thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.